Good afternoon, everyone. This is Dr. Diggs. It's another rainy one out here in the Pacific Northwest, but I got my hoodie on. We're enjoying it. And today, we're going to be talking about everything relating to the status effect formula. Specifically, we're going to dive deep into charm and how the ribbon actually works. So, if any of you guys have ever been on stream with me, we do have a gentleman named Cuttlefish who joins us quite regularly. He is kind of like Bob, in which he is one of my mods and is pretty active in the community. He sent me this link a long time ago and we were talking about how you actually calculate how a status effect is going to land and how you gauge whether or not a status effect is essentially effective to use, right? And a lot of this conversation happened back when Ribbon came out and we were talking about it on stream. Because when you look at the ribbon, you see stop resistance 30% up for self, slow resistance 30% up for self. And a lot of people will see that and they'll brush it off, right? They'll just be like, that's not a big deal. I don't understand why it's not immunity to stop or immunity to slow. And in a way it actually is. And we're going to jump into the formula here. We'll talk about some examples and we'll show you how... 30% resistance for self and 30% slow resistance for self is actually for many characters guaranteed immunity to stop and slow. So the basic formula for static, static, whoo, status effects is going to be your faith and your opponent's faith divided times one, sorry, divided times 100. Oh my God, divided by 100 times the status effect chance minus the unit's individual resistance. Now, a unit's individual resistance can be either is base resistance to a status ailment, or it can also be a piece of equipment you have equipped, that resistance as well. So let's go over some examples, and this is gonna be pretty math heavy, everyone, so try to stay with me. Look at the screen if you get a little bit lost. Example number one, we have Frederica with 30 faith using arm shot, which, if you didn't know, Armshot is a 25% chance to disable on Lucia, who has 30 faith as well. So you have 30 and 30 divided by 100 times 0.25 is a 15% chance that disable will land on Lucia. Now, example number two. Frederica, 30 faith, uses Armshot, 25% disable chance on Agrius with 30 faith. Agrius has 10% disable resistance. So you notice in the equation, everything goes the same here until we get to this right side of the equation. And this is where resistance comes in, okay? So there was a 25% chance, right, that disable is gonna land. But Agrius's resistance is 10% to disable. So 0.25 minus 0.10 is gonna be 0.15 times the faith modifier. Now, a lot of people might see 10% disable resistance and be like, no, this has to be wrong because that should be, right, if it was 15% with Lucia and it's the same faith and the same disable, only 10% disable resistance, it should be 5% chance to disable Agrius. That's not how these equations work. And I think that's the biggest misconception about status ailments right now. And it's because you're thinking about status resistances as a whole, right? You're not thinking about it as part of an equation. And it's actually a really weird way to do status effect resistance is to actually tell us what is going into the equation for resistances. It's very different than most games that you would play. So let's say you had 25% disable resistance on Agrius. No matter what your faith is, Agrius would have 100% resistance to disable if she had 25% disable resistance, is essentially how this works. So let's jump in and let's look at a couple more uh, explanations of this. And let's specifically look at Ribbon here, because I have a feeling the Ribbon is really going to be the way to go when we're talking about this. And we're going to use an example of Ketone. Okay, now Ketone has two different stop techniques. She has Shadow Bind, which is going to give 25% chance to inflict stop. 
And then she has Saiga Shadow Bind, which is her limit break, which has a 67% chance to inflict stop. Now, let's give an example here. Ketone has 70 faith, uses her limit break, which has a 67% stop, on Warrior of Light, who has 70 faith. So it would be 70 plus 70 divided by 100 times 67% minus the 30% stop resistance from Ribbon would be a 51% chance that stop lands on Warrior of Light. And that's with the Ribbon equipped. And let's do another example, but let's talk about Shadow Bind. Ketone, 70 Faith, same thing, Shadow Bind, but it has a 25% chance to stop on Warrior of Light. Go through the equation here and you can see that the 0.25% and the 0.30% of the ribbon makes it so that there is a 0% chance that stop lands on Warrior of Light. So essentially what a ribbon will do for you is it will counter stop depending on the percentage chance to inflict stop from attacks. Now, stop from limit break like Saiga Shadowbind for Ketone is one of the few abilities that will bypass the Ribbon's ability to essentially nullify stop on a character. So if you equip a Ribbon on a unit and you're going up against Agrius or Warrior of Light, for example, all of their stop abilities are 25% chance to land on you. So Ribbon is going to nullify the stop for those for any time those units use stop on a unit wearing your Ribbon. So in effect, Ribbon does nullify stop, no matter what, unless you are getting Saiga Shadowbound by Ketone, or unless there is another stop ability that has a higher modifier or percent chance to inflict stop over 30%. A great example of this is actually with Slow, because the Ribbon also gives 30% resistance to Slow as well. Now, if you come down here and you look at regular slow at the bottom, regular slow has a 25% chance to inflict slow. So that means if we plug this in with the ribbon equation, it's going to be nullified no matter what if a character has ribbon. However, if you look at counter slow, right? The time mage counter ability, there is a 50% chance to inflict, inflict slow. So if your unit is wearing a ribbon, they can still have slow land on them, not from regular casted slow, but from counter slow, which is very interesting to me. Of course, you will have a resistance to it, right? So essentially the modifier is only going to be 0 0.20 instead of 0 0.50, which is very, you know, significant. However, it's not going to give you full immunity to the counter slow. There's some more things that go along with this and Specifically, I want to talk about Charm, because I know for a lot of people, Charm is either a live PvP strategy, or Charm is something, like I think about the ninth floor EX that we experienced uh, more recently in the Deep Dungeon, and there were three thief enemies that just ran around and spammed Charm. And if I had had a better understanding of how Charmed worked, and what the unit resistances were, I could have put together probably a substantially better guide for that map to make it much easier for people because most people were just saying, well, you just steal heart counter. And that was a viable strategy, but I, I wanted to do it without steel heart and I eventually did, but I couldn't figure out, you know, what other ways could I have done it or what ways could a free to play player have done it? So we're going to go ahead and talk about charm real quick. Charm is a little weird because Charm has, unlike most status ailments, a 50% chance to inflict. Now, what's also weird about Charm is a lot of units either have strengths to it or weaknesses to it. So that's probably the reason we're seeing the 50% chance instead of like a 25 or 30% chance. There are a couple sources of Charm. Steelheart has 100% accuracy. So, right, it's going to hit you no matter what. So you're only basically checking against the charm percentage. Enchanting Trap, which is Victoria's LB, has the highest percentage chance to charm at 67% chance to charm. And Reincarnation, which is, of course, Fina's bow, 
has a 15% chance to charm. And I think this is really important to know because if you look at, you know, people talking about bow meta or talking about trying to make Fina a little bit more relevant, her bow, a lot of people talk about the charm from her bow, almost half, I would say, or more of the unit's rosters basically resist reincarnation completely just by natively having that 15% charm resistance. So that is something to think about if you are ever thinking about using reincarnation. So what units essentially fully resist charm? And that's gonna be any unit with 50% charm resistance. That's going to be Agrius. But besides Agrius, there's actually five other units that completely resist charm. It's gonna be Dario, Ruin Stern, Seymour, Schutzelt, and oddly enough, Oldoa. Now, there are a couple other units, specifically MR units like Grace and Nasha, that do have some resistance to charm in between in like the 20%, 25% range. Murmur is also another one of them. I didn't include them because they're not going to be as relevant for a lot of people, but just be aware, I want you to know about them. And I, I want you to know that there are other units that do have a reasonably high charm resistance that could probably be reasonably good against charm, but there is no other units in the game, even with Fleeting Tranquility equipped, which is the card that adds 15 charm resistance, that will have 100% resistance to charm. It's essentially those six units that have the 100% resistance, any other unit is going to at least in some way, even with Fleeting Tranquility, be susceptible to charm. Now, this is also important for anyone who auto farms in multi, because there are enemies out there that do charm in the auto farming multis for single units. And I know I've run into this problem. I know other people have run into this problem. And you can actually use one of these units to solo farm and kind of avoid that charm death to sort of ruin your multi farming. Now, some other significant units also have charm resistance, that would be Ayaka, Miranda, Medina. I listed every single UR unit here. The only UR units that really have weaknesses to charm don't really have substantial weaknesses, so that's gonna be like Frederica. There's an MR unit, also Mont, and a couple other MR units that have weakness to charm. Other than that though, this is pretty much the list, and almost every single unit is going to be susceptible to Victoria's Limit Break. So that is also something to keep in mind. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for sitting through this kind of in-depth conversation about status ailments. There's another video I wanna make since Cuttlefish and I were talking about Mustadio's mastery ability because there's also a sort of mistaken realization that Mustadio's master ability doesn't actually do what it says it does. It actually is only about a 10% improvement on his uh, status ailment landing. And most of the websites say it's a 200% modification, which is not true. So look forward to that video coming in the near future. And we're also probably gonna talk about doom resistance and petrify resistance a little bit, since that is also relevant for some multi farms. As always, everyone, if you are planning on buying Vizior, please use my affiliate link, dig.gs slash coins. It is the best way to support me without actually directly giving me money. And of course, make sure you come check out our Discord at dig.gs slash Discord as well. Thank you so much, everyone. I hope you found this video useful and have a great rest of your day.